How far do you want to go down the rabbit hole with your jazz improvisation on saxophone? That is the big question. And I'm going to demonstrate exactly where you can start and I'm going to demonstrate where you can finish with five levels of jazz improvisation on a simple standard. So everyone starts off by learning the standard autumn leaves. So I've taken the first eight bars and I'm going to play the most simple solo that you can think of going up to an extremely complicated modern solo. Through these five examples, we're going to see exactly how you can improvise on a jazz standard at different levels. So let's get straight into it. This is what level one sounds like. <laughs> So this is level one. This is the most basic way that you could improvise over something like Autumn Leaves, which is mainly in one key center. And that is by using a one scale fits all approach. In this case, we're using the A minor uh, pentatonic scale or the C major pentatonic scale, same thing. <laughs> and we can use this as a blanket scale to cover the whole of the first A of uh, autumn leaves. So even though you've got a pentatonic scale, which is the most elementary harmonic element we can use, we're still trying to play motivic phrases. So there's A, that's your kind of, uh, that's your question. There's your answer to it. And here's your finishing phrase. And then here's your turnaround phrase to take you back to the beginning of your next phrase. So even though you're using one scale, focus on rhythmic and, and motivic interest. Also, I'm playing it with really great swing phrasing, which is gonna make even the pentatonic scale sound good. However, what I'm not doing is making the chord changes or anything like that. So this is the most basic level where you would start when you're improvising on autumn leaves. <laughs> Okay, let's now move on to level two. And by the way, if you want to get the backing track, it's by uh, Jay's Better Tracks. It's the Autumn Leaves from Jay's Better Tracks. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get a hold of that backing track. <laughs> Okay, so on level two, we're mainly focusing on the scales that go along with the chords. So we're moving out of that one scale fits all solution and we're using the associated scales from each of these chords, which are gonna, you know, the scales are gonna fit the chords. And it's, you know, once you start analyzing it, it's mostly a C major scale with the exception of the E7 chord and the A minor chord where we're using A melodic minor instead of A natural minor. So I don't know if you're familiar, you remember those uh, Jamie Abersold books and there always used to be all these scales written in it. We're kind of using that, but we're also using some voice leading. So this is really a kind of a, this is more like a sort of uh, bebop cliche, if you like. <laughs> You know, that's very much a bebop cliche, but then I continue the pattern down. So there's some use of motifs there. But you can see the voice leading is nice because it goes from the seventh to the third. Okay, that's classic voice leading right on the bar line, which is really going to make you sound like you're kind of making the changes. Uh, we're throwing around, the, we just go up the scale here. Uh, we're going to the ninth of that F major seven. We've got some uh, syncopation here. So we're kind of throwing the rhythm around. We're hitting the, the uh, up the scale to the chord tones. And then on the E7, we're going straight down the Phrygian. We're going straight down the Phrygian dominant scale, which we're going to see in some of the later versions as well. So the Phrygian dominant scale is like a normal Mixolydian scale, like a normal E7 scale, but with a flattened ninth and a flattened 13, because that's the kind of Phrygian-y type elements of it. Um, and it sounds like this. But for our purposes, we're going to start on the seventh and we're going to go straight down. But to spice things up, we'll throw in the turn. 
And once again, we have nice voice leading going from the seventh to the third. So these are the kind of mini bits of voice leading on the bar line that make it really sound like you're making the changes. And then up the scale, then we got this nice kind of a nine to natural seven lick there. And a sort of rhythmic figure to finish. Bado, bado, bado. So it's a kind of three over four type rhythm. So we'd start to mix up the rhythms and get a bit more advanced that way. I'll just play this one through before we move on. Just before we move on to the next level, remember I've got a PDF with all these examples for tenor sax and for um, alto sax for B flat and D flat. You can use the link that you can see there. Help yourself to get that PDF. You can really learn a lot about how to improvise and jazz just from this one cheat sheet. So make sure you grab your PDF cheat sheet. Okay, let's move on. All right, things are hotting up now. We're gonna up the ante a little bit. Here's what the level three improvisation sounds like. <laughs> Okay, this is level three. <laughs> and this time we're really spelling out the chord changes with uh, predominantly chord tones. Okay, so let's look straight from the beginning. Number one, we've got this kind of half-tongued ghosted rip up. And this is a D minor nine arpeggio. Then we have some voice leading through the G7, incorporating an altissimo note uh, in the shape of that G. So the voice leading is going from the ninth here of the D minor seven, which continues on here. The G seven is delayed. And then we go to the sharp five of the G seven and it resolves down. Uh, you see that that sharp five resolves to the third of C major seven. However, and we're incorporating the flat nine on the way down as well. However, this is a bebop cliche. I didn't make this up. This is just a standard uh, bebop cliche. You can hear Hank Mobley do it a lot. You can definitely hear uh, Michael Brecker do it a lot. So the, the the reason this line works is the ninth to the sharp five to, and, and quite often it'll resolve to the ninth. You'll quite often see that lick resolving to the ninth of the chord. But in this case, I delayed the resolution of the ninth until, you know, that uh, that fourth eighth note. So let me play that lick. It looks like a right mess on screen now. But the key notes there, um, through that lick, are the E going to the D sharp, going to the D. That's the main voice leading that ties in this whole idea. What an absolute state that screen is in. Never mind. <laughs> then we've got a nice little glissando in here, uh, joining up this, the C and the E. And you'll see that the voice leading here is moving from the seventh of um, F major seven into the flat five of B half diminished. Now this time I've thrown in something a little bit spicier. I've thrown in this A major triad, which spells out the 11, natural nine, and flat seven of R, B, half diminished chord. So that's another little variation on the extensions which I've thrown in for interest. Now here, we're back to our um, Phrygian, we're using the Phrygian dominant scale. I don't know if this will fit, that's gonna go off the bottom of the screen. I'm just gonna put Phrygian dominant, okay? Which is a Mixolydian scale with a flat nine and a flat 13. But I've jumbled up the intervals to make it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> because that makes it more jagged and kind of angular. Most of the time you would do something like, uh, but I've made it a lot more interesting because this is level three and why not? And it's quite funky the way it resolves to the natural six on that minor chord. That's, you know, that's got some real spiciness to it, okay? We're using the melodic minor scale here, as you can see by the G sharp and the F sharp. And then here, this is spelling out an A7 flat nine chord because it's going back to D minor seven for the second A section. And this is quite a standard bebop lick. And as you can see, we are enclosing, this is the third of D minor seven, and we're enclosing it nicely with 
these two chord tones. We're playing with the harmonic rhythm. As you can see from the green circles, we're pushing where the notes resolve. That's more advanced. We're using bebop cliches and language. But da 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 but do you be da da That's just, you know, a bebop cliche. We're slightly going into the altissimo with the high G for tenor. And we've got lots of uh, uh, more advanced phrasing going on with turns, glissandos, bends, falls, and half tongue and all that sort of stuff. So that is level three. <laughs> Here's what the Autumn Leaves Level 4 jazz improvisation sounds like. So we're going to start with uh, a phrasing idea, which is a bup. So you'll see that there's that um, grace note F, and you very quickly gliss down onto the D sharp to get this kind of effect. And that's something that you quite often hear in bebop, but it's a slightly more tricky thing to achieve. Now, first of all, we start off with a chromatic enclosure aiming for this note. This is our target note. It's the third of D minor seven. We've got two semitones beneath and we've got two semitones above and they enclose that F. Two semitones under and then two semitones from the top to hit that F. Down to another chord tone and then another chromatic passing note to head into the G7. Now really, this is a delayed G7 because we're still sort of in, um, we're still sort of in D minor here. So we're going ba ba do ba da. Really the G7 starts there. And we've got an altered chord here. So this is the flat nine, and this is the sharp nine. Now you hear Sonny Rollins do this a lot. Ba -dee -da, ba -dee -da. You'll also hear Bird do it quite a lot, and you'll see that the resolution to the C major seven is delayed by a beat. Here's another intricate harmonic maneuver. Instead of going straight to the major seven chord, you can do this passing chord of F diminished instead. So here's the F major seven. <laughs> But you can throw in the uh, diminished 7 starting on F before you get there. Now, this happens on uh, Misty, for example. If I was doing Misty in this particular key, so if I was ending up on E... So quite often you'll find a diminished chord resolving to uh, major seven chords, and that's what I've thrown in here. We've got a nice little gliss down to the C. Uh, we've got a chromatic passing tone there going from the 11th to the third of the B half diminished. And then we've got this uh, this interesting little sort of flirting with double time move, which is quite a sort of beboppy fun thing to do with the rhythm, which really makes it skip along. It's quite a sort of Charlie Parker-ish thing to do, really. And then it resolves into a turn. And the way you play that turn, that's, you know, quite an advanced concept as well, because you don't just play the notes, da -da 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 -da. you go, -da 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 -da. you kind of ghost the first part of it. And that's slightly more advanced phrasing for this fourth version. So, -da 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 -da. so there's a lot of rhythmic interest there, and it's quite advanced. Oh, by the way, I should mention that this whole scale here going down is the E... Phrygian dominant, okay? Phryg... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I've spelt it right. And I'm skipping down that scale using that da 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 And, as, as we should do, we're voice leading into the third of the A minor 7. We're using the melodic minor scale here, as you can see from the F sharps and G sharps. And then, here's a new thing that we haven't done so far. I've thrown in the blues scale to finish it off. Uh, we're not going to use the A7 to turn around back. I've just got a nice blues uh, blues scale, but it's in triplets. So it's also got rhythmic interest and it's got some extra scoops in it. So the D sharp uh, scoops to the E, first of all, you can see that in there. Now this E flat here is going to be the side E flat. So we're also adding in some alternate fingerings and we're going to do the same on the D as well. Side E flat, side D. So that final bar in slow motion
and you would probably half tongue or ghost tongue this a in there so very advanced phrasing elements and a bit of rhythmic interest to finish <laughs> One more time, remember to go and grab your PDF cheat sheet for these five levels of jazz improvisation. You can really learn a lot. You've got E-flat and B-flat transpositions. Just use the link there. All you've got to do is fill in your email and you can get a really great study guide to see how you can build up your level of improvising over a simple chord sequence. And now to the final level where we're going super modern. Things, all sorts of crazy things are happening now. This is level five of the Autumn Leaves Jazz Improv. <laughs> So we start off with an idea built on fourths, but the rhythm is divided into five sets of eighth notes. So we've got some extra rhythmic interest in terms of groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's already added an extra, an extra layer of complexity. Then we've got these, these fourths ascending like this. And then you go down and then back up another set of fourths before starting the pattern again. Now, the notes chosen there don't necessarily fit D minor seven or even G seven. It's more like an overlay with a strong harmonic shape that's just thrown on top. Then it resolves down to the third. I mean, you could say when you get to here, you've got the third, the sharp five and the flat nine of G seven which resolves to the third of C major seven. But then as soon as we hit C major seven, we're straight into this uh, Lydian idea because I've made it C major seven sharp 11 and you can see that by the F sharps, okay? Then we've got a kind of uh, a sort of pentatonic type idea here that goes right up into the altissimo register of the horn right up to that top A. And it's got a bit of growl on it and it's got that nice fall off, which is another sort of advanced method of phrasing. And then we finish with this climactic double time section, which is all on the diminished scale, okay? This is E, look at my scuffy handwriting. So this is the dominant diminished scale, which goes semitone tone, semitone tone, semitone tone, all the way up. <laughs> So you can see the notes of the double time section there go. And it finishes with those two diminished arpeggios. Because within the dominant diminished scale, you've also got those, those two diminished arpeggios, which is quite cool. Now the whole thing actually resolves with some nice voice leading because this is really just an E7 flat nine. You've got the B, you've got the G sharp, which is the third, F is the flat nine, and D is the flat seven, going to the third of the home chord. So even within that kind of fast, slightly outside line, we've got voice leading to resolve the chord, and it goes to this tasty natural sixth there to resolve. And you can see that we're using the melodic minor through this section, okay? Melodic minor just off the bottom of the page a little bit there. Uh, this time we're incorporating a turnaround chord because the A7 goes back to the D minor 7 for the next A section and it's A7 altered. So there's the third of the chord, there's the sharp 9 of the chord, there's the flat 9 of the chord and rhythmically speaking we've got this triplet in the middle of the bar which is quite interesting. Da 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 which is another sort of slightly more advanced rhythm. So as you can see in the box there, we've got lots of things which are more advanced. It's a higher level of improvising. The quartal overlays, the voice leading, and the altered extensions are still all there. The groups of five in the rhythm and that mid bar triplet down in the last bar, that's more advanced rhythms. You've got more modern language, you've got the altissimo, and you've got some advanced phrasing techniques as well. So that is level five of our Autumn Leaves Jazz Improvising. <laughs> Don't forget that at the end of the day, 
Jazz improvisation is about expressing yourself and, you know, whatever you do, whatever level you're at, one to five, one to a million, the number one thing would should be to connect with your emotions, try, to try and connect with your audience and to try and communicate what's in your heart and soul when you're improvising jazz. Never forget that. That is the most important thing. Okay, that's all we've got time for this week. Remember to go and grab your free PDF cheat sheet for today's lesson, the five levels of jazz improvisation. It's really going to help you out. All you've got to do is fill in your email. If you want to get more information and if you just want to have a great time as a sax player, don't forget to go and check out the Inner Circle membership where there's a bonus video every week. There's a great solo which I analyze in detail from a whole different range of genres every month. There's a monthly uh, question and answer where you can ask me anything you want. There's backstage videos where I talk you through my gigs and everything I'm doing. And it's just the best way to get direct access to me. Practically the only way, actually. So there's a free seven-day trial. You can't go wrong. Go and check out the Inner Circle membership right now. You will not regret it, I promise you. And finally, if you bought me a coffee, thank you so much. You are very, very kind people. And if you want to buy me a coffee... Do, 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 I don't know what Charlie Parker's, uh, Parker's mood has got to do with the link for buy me a coffee, but <laughs> there it is. All right, I hope this week um, you learned something and it was a useful video. And I'll be back with more cool sax content next week. So practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy. Oh, f I was on the wrong f mic. Doesn't matter though, does it? Because I'm recording from there. This is all f***ing wrong. <laughs> <laughs>